Hi, I'm Michelle Fitzgerald with the Senzar Learning Center, and today I want to talk with you a little bit about a really important part of the body that you've probably never heard about before called the vagus nerve and its connection to the heart and, uh, amazingly enough, its connection to belief codes. Uh, and how by paying a little more attention to all three of these things, uh, you can greatly enhance your overall health and well-being uh, and even your, your manifestation results, uh, even um, your outcomes with law of attraction principles and manifesting uh, the type of experiences that you want to have in life. I had the great experience uh, just a couple days ago of hearing a uh, gal by the name of uh, Barbara Fredrickson doing a uh, presentation at, at a conference. I wasn't at the conference. I was watching a uh, little video clip uh, that was on TED Talks. Anyway, I saw this gal doing a talk uh, called Remaking Love. And um, she's a social psychologist and she, among other things, studies uh, positive emotions and uh, positive emotional exchanges between human beings and how that affects the human condition. Uh, and anyway, she mentioned in her talk this thing called the vagus nerve, and it really caught my attention because it's unusual. You don't hear that many people talking about it. And um, I've been focusing very heavily on the vagus nerve myself for a time now, not physically though, and not uh, necessarily from a pure emotional standpoint, but from a subtle energy standpoint, I've been paying very close attention to it uh, for some time now. Um, uh, in monitoring the overall health and well-being of this, my subtle energy system. Uh, the way I, I maintain a really healthy uh, body and, 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 and you know, what I call manifestation machine is um, I manage the energetics. Uh, everything that, that um, every physical organ that you see all the way down to the cellular you know, structure, our individual cells, every physical thing that you see around you in life, um, all of that begins with a thought pattern. And so I'm very interested in thought patterns and the condition of the thought patterns and how the thought patterns affect the manifest reality of things like organs, glands, uh, you know, your financial state, <laughs> your, your relationships and the quality or lack of in the relationships, all that type of thing, just by looking at the thought matrix that precedes everything. Anyway, uh, backing up to, to, to uh, Barbara Fredrickson, she was talking about the vagus nerve because she's been uh, paying attention to the science that's going on with these things called micro connections. Uh, what are micro connections and how it, how it relates to the vagus nerve um, and, and, and how that all relates to the, the heart. And she didn't talk about other organs, but it would affect other organs as well. But what are these micro connections that she was talking about? Micro connections are where you make that, that literally that just little you know, millisecond or one second or a few seconds of very positive, genuine emotional exchange with another human being. You have that loving um, thought as you smile and look at a friend and, um, and they catch that, they, they connect with that, they feel it too. And, and those moments where one person has that, that, that feeling and the other person connects with it and they feel it, uh, it creates this great resonance that uh, it ends up greatly affects this vagus nerve. Uh, another example would be you're sitting next to a friend and feeling compassion and you look up and look in their eyes, they're going through a, a, you know, a trying moment and you, you've got tear, you know, sympathetic tears in your eyes, you look at them, and you're, but you're feeling love, great love and compassion for them and in that moment there's that beautiful connection and they can feel it too. Those are micro connections. And the science is now showing that, according to Barbara Fredrickson, is, is that these micro connections greatly impact this thing called the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is, is very important because, again, it, it is connected to all these organs that you see here. And it's like a major communication channel for letting the brain know how these organs are doing. And uh, it also has the capacity to stimulate uh, these organs in, in certain ways um, to drive certain responses that can help the organs. The heart is what uh, Barbara Fredrickson was talking about. And one of the things they now know about the vagus nerve in the heart is one of the things it does is it calms the heart and it, it helps the heart uh, maintain uh, very smooth rhythms with the heartbeat. Uh, that's called coherence. And, um, uh, if you've paid any attention to my work over, over the years, you've heard me talk about the importance of coherent heart and brainwave patterns and the role that plays in, in uh, the electromagnetic field that's generated by the heart and the role that plays in everything from our health and well-being to our manifestation capacity. 
Um, I've got a few YouTube videos on this that have to do with the, the, the electromagnetic field of the heart and its relationship to manifestation. So when you're done watching this video, go on and watch those videos as well. Bring yourself up to speed on some of the stuff I've been talking about in this regard. But anyway, this calming of the heart as a byproduct of the way the vagus nerve is functioning is critically important. And it's, it's assistance in helping the heart maintain these very um, ideal rhythmic patterns that strengthen the heart. Uh, you know, heart disease is the number one uh, cause of death uh, globally at this point. And so it benefits everyone to really strengthen the heart physically but also strengthen the heart energetically. And if we can maintain a calmer heart, a more rhythmic heartbeat, the energetics, that's what I look at, the subtle energy realm that we can't measure with machines or anything like that, but I can see and other people can see and feel. And it definitely affects the subtle energy realm to keep this heart functioning in the right way. So this vagus nerve, keeping it in good shape, is going to help your heart function in the right way for optimal well-being in multiple categories in your life, physical and metaphysical. And it ends up these micro connections help the vagus nerve do that job more effectively. So one of the things you can do on a very physical, emotional level to really help yourself and your heart is start force feeding yourself it, more your experience your, your experiential self um, uh, more of these micro connections making more taking time being more present making more mindful connections emotional heart to heart connections with people it's going to impact this vagus nerve setting that aside why have i been so interested yes i'm interested in this but why am i ultra interested in this particular uh, thing called the vagus nerve a number of years ago, um, we'll go back, we'll say to 2002, some very um, unusual cosmic activity and earth energy activity began happening with this planet. That uh, I won't go into all of it because there's just not time to do that. But um, uh, the bottom line is this earth energy and cosmic activity has been continuing for since 2002, 2003. And one of the impacts that it had on me and a lot of really sensitive, energetically sensitive people like me is it, it really affected our hearts. Uh, I started having symptoms uh, that, that uh, like accelerated heart rate for no reason whatsoever. I'd just be sitting there. Uh, arrhythmia, I started having dizzy spells that were so bad, I'd, I'd be sitting there and just swaying. I was so busy, dizzy, fearful that I was going to pass out. It ended up that nothing was physically wrong with me at all. Uh, it was completely energetic and it was being caused by this cosmic and earth energy activity. Now with that, I'm going to make a disclaimer here that if you're having weird symptoms like that, you should certainly see a physical medical doctor to make sure your heart and everything else is okay. But as it turns out, I was perfectly okay. Everything was okay, but I was having these physically, I was having these weird symptoms. What was going on? Well, one of the things that was going on, setting aside the, the root cause, which was this cosmic and earth energy activity, which by the way, still goes on to this day, one of the other causal factors had to do with my vagus nerve. The, the, the very base energetic matrix of that nerve had gotten really screwed up in my system. And um, I'm gonna show you a little picture of something that I call a spirit unit. Uh, I believe that, that before any physical organ, even a nerve, <laughs> a nerve, gland, organ, whatever shows up, there's a thought pattern behind that. And I manage my health, the way I manage myself energetically and physically is I pay attention to the thought patterning and I try to keep those thoughts that, that, that basically produce our organs, glands, and other body parts in really great shape. And the energy, uh, you could think of it as a type of energetic layering that the thought, uh, the, the original thought of your, let's say your heart, has to make it through a series of these types of energetic layers before the physical organ shows up. I'm managing all the stuff before the physical organ shows up uh, to keep myself healthy. And I've been doing that for, for many, many, many decades now. And I teach other people how to do that too. But I'm very, very interested in and have been following very closely for about the past, oh, 10, 15 years maybe, uh, this, this, this aspect of our, our, our energetic self that I call the spirit unit. And basically, the, the short, of, short explanation of this is it's, it's time. It's a, you're looking at, I've actually seen these things that I eventually labeled spirit units. And they look like this, these big, beautiful, swirly, wispy, uh, 
things of ever continuous uh, swirls of light, of this light blue light. And um, they're, in essence, time. They're little bits of time that the thought of, your, of you, including every single cell, organ, gland, everything, uh, starts off by basically a thought projecting through a unit of time. And if you, if you learn how to manage this, these time units, um, you can really help enhance your health and well-being. I discovered that I was having years ago, that the way I discovered this is I was having uh, some physical problems. And uh, one night I had, a, I just, I asked, I said, I want to see what's going on. If I can just see energetically what's at the root of this problem, I'm sure I can fix it, but I can't figure out what's going on. And uh, what's going on? And I was, I was, I had a dream, a very vivid dream, and I was shown a close-up of this thing that I'm describing to you today. I later labeled it a spirit unit, but it was like a video camera was in my brain, and it was, it was taking me and showing me a close-up of this blue wispy thing. And I could see that there were these little breaks in this thing that's supposed to be continuous. And I instantly, it's called clairsentience, instant knowing. I instantly understood that this was not right. That was not supposed to happen. I woke up just like that. And I just stood up and I said, hmm, connect the dots. That, it was like a dot board to me. And I just said, can I just fix this with intention? I asked a, a dowsing question. You know, you've seen me do the muscle testing before. Can I fix this with simple intention? And the answer was yes. And I said, well, connect those. Because I understood fully that the problem was they weren't connected. And they were instantly connected. And by the way, the physical problems that I was having at that time completely disappeared, completely disappeared just by connecting the dots at this level. Now, it's not quite that simple because the, the disconnections will reoccur if you don't ultimately solve the cause of the disconnections. And I later found out that what causes these disconnections are belief codes. And again, if you've watched any of my other uh, uh, YouTube videos or if you've followed my work uh, through the Senzar Learning Center, you've heard me talk a lot about belief codes. These are subconscious, uh, they're thought patterns that we create either in past lifetimes or this lifetime or that we inherit that function like a type of subconscious life program and dictate how our life will unfold based on our judgments about how life works in the past. The problem with belief codes is that they're always connected to points of stress in our past. And so when they come forward, they're always bringing with them the memory of stress and, um, and, uh, and, and other things. And that, that, that memory of stressful times actually is what creates these, even though the times are over, we're not experiencing those times now or those experiences, your, your energetic operating system can't, doesn't get that. It's when the memories are pulled to the surface, it thinks it's happening right now and it causes a type of stress in the body that ultimately affects the spirit unit and causes these disconnections. Ultimately, if that, if, if belief codes surface, if the same codes surface over and over and over and over, they will cause like a permanent type of damage in the spirit unit. And um, the thought pattern that is supposed to show up in perfect form and create whatever the organ or gland or nerve is, uh, simply cannot show up correctly and dis-ease or disease, disease is, it starts with dis-ease as in not settled and it leads to disease ends up when you have chronically uh, chronic disconnections in your spirit unit. So again, I'm always uh, you know, paying attention. I do something called the organ function test where I do periodically like a tune-up on myself and I just examine the thought patterning and this spirit unit thing um, of all my major organs and glands on a very ma and, and other body parts that are key, including the vagus nerve, on a very regular basis. The vagus nerve came to my attention because of this heart thing that was going on with me. And again, I discovered that one of the reasons my heart was getting so stressed out 
from the, the cosmic and earth energy activity that was going on. I'm very, very earth sensitive, very, very uh, sensitive to what happens with our sun, what happens to stars, you know, way far away. I can, I just have, I have um, uh, uh, physical reactions to things happening with stellar and, and planetary bodies. And I'm not the only one. There are other people on the planet like me. It was affecting my heart in a big way, but the real problem was that my vagus nerve, because of belief codes, certain belief codes surfacing chronically, my vagus nerve had become uh, it, probably under a microscope. If you can look at it under an electron microscope or something, it would look perfectly fine, but the energetic matrix of the vagus nerve was totally screwed up. And so the spirit unit was all, there were many, many hundreds of disconnections. And all I needed to do was I needed to temporarily just hold my intention and say, please connect all the disconnections. This is the intention you hold. You think about the spirit unit and you just say, please connect all disconnects in my spirit unit of the vagus nerve in the right and perfect way. And that's going to cause, I, I call it a band-aid response. It's going to uh, create a connection that will, will help you immediately, uh, has helped me immediately. I'm not going to speak for you, but I'll tell you, it helped me immediately calm down my heart function. And I stopped having uh, the kind of severe reactions that I was having to all this earth energy and cosmic uh, activity just by managing the energetic aspect of the vagus nerve. Now, Ultimately, what you need to do if you want to stop that breakage from occurring in the spirit unit is you have to get to the root of the problem, and the root of the problem is belief codes. you got to get in and clear belief codes. And that's not as easy as just holding your intention and saying, connect the dots. So how do you clear belief codes? Well, you could, there's many, many ways, but you could start by just learning the mini-me method uh, that I have on another YouTube video. It's called Cracking Belief Codes with the Mini-me Method. Uh, you could focus on whatever organ or gland that um, you, you douse. Do I have any uh, spirit unit disconnections in the vagus nerve or in any or all components of my heart or whatever? And you pick, you pick an organ, you pick a gland, you pick uh, a nerve, you pick whatever, and you just say, do I have any disconnects uh, in the um, spirit unit of that organ, gland, whatever? If you get a yes with muscle testing or with your pendulum, whatever you're using, or just your psychic visioning, your intuitive visioning, then you're going to say, okay, and I'm going to just tell you today, every break in the spirit unit of these organs, glands, whatever, is caused by a belief code. There's not an, ex not an exception to that. So how many belief codes would be the next dowsing question, next intuitive inquiry question, how many belief codes do I have that have disrupted or damaged the spirit unit cause disconnections in the spirit unit of, let's say, the vagus nerve. And you get a count, and, in, 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 and you go and you start, you use whatever method you have available to you to clear those belief codes, to get out of resonance with those old memory patterns so they stop disturbing the energetic matrix of the physical organ, gland, cell, whatever. Um, so again, it starts with a temporary fix, just with intention. Please connect, I call it the connect the dots um, uh, procedure. Uh, do I have any disconnections in the spirit unit of my liver in, in all elements of the liver? Yes. Okay, please connect the dots. And you just you visualize this and you just imagine, just use your, your imagination to see all the little disconnects connecting. Um, if, you, if you're clairvoyant, you'll actually be able to see the disconnections in the spirit unit. But you connect the dots, and that's going to give you some, it's going to buy you some time. Let's put it that way. It's going to help make things better. Uh, it could be permanently, but usually it's a temporary thing because the belief codes that cause the problem are probably going to surface again. Again, if they're chronic and they keep on surfacing over and over and over, then they, it, the end result will be some form of disease in the physical organ itself. And the, the other thing you have to realize is that the belief codes that are causing the spirit unit breaks today uh, may not be the belief codes that are causing the spirit uh, unit breaks tomorrow. So you need to very regularly, you heard me say that I very regularly uh, do this thing, I call it an organ function test. And I do this very regularly uh, just to see uh, how uh, my spirit unit is doing as reflected in my major body parts. One of the major body parts that I encourage you to start considering is this, because it plays such a huge role 
in uh, the heart rhythms, and the heart rhythms play such a huge role in everything else. If you'd like to get a free article on some of the subtle energy dynamics and some of the, the subtle energy stuff that happens with the heart, why it's so important to manage the magnetic field of that heart and the electrical component too, they come together. Managing the electromagnetic uh, well-being of the heart is so, so hugely important. And there's all kinds of people talking about this out there today from all different directions, from the science community, from the metaphysical community. Um, you need to be managing the heart, period. But I've got a wonderful free article. If you go to my website, you see the, the link to the website here on the video. Uh, and go to the Heart Smarts section. And you'll, you can download a free article called 10 Easy Ways to Improve the Electromagnetic Function of Your Heart and uh, do everything I say on there, and that's going to help you. Do what uh, Barbara Fredrickson is saying, and that is be more conscious and be more mindful about um, engaging in these micro-connections. Make more of them happen. You have the ability to do that, and that's going to benefit the vagus nerve. That's going to benefit the heart. It's going to benefit all these other organs as well, and you're going to be in much better shape. Um, and anyway, that's it for today. I hope that you uh, learned something. I hope that you enjoyed the presentation. Look at um, Barbara uh, Fredrickson's video. And you can look it up, I'm sure, on YouTube or just with a simple search. Put her name in. It's F-R-E. Fred, F-R-E-D-R-I-C-K-S-O-N. And again, I saw the clip on TED Talk. So I'm sure if you put Barbara Fredrickson, uh, Remaking Love, that was the name of the presentation. TED Talks, you're going to pull up the video. You can watch it for yourself. Very enjoyable little video clip. I think it's only 11 minutes. Won't take you long to watch. Bye for now.